Welcome back to another lesson on financial mathematics. Okay, we have now really had a thorough look at the future value of an annuity. Let's quickly just revise what we mean by an annuity. An annuity is a sequence of payments. It's a sequence of payments, in other words, recurring payments. Either I'm making a fixed amount deposit monthly into an account, or maybe yearly into account, or termly, any, any sort of fixed reoccurring investment. Now this can also represent loans, paying back um, a loan. I pay back loans with a fixed monthly investment or a fixed yearly investment depending on your agreement. Okay, now what we're going to look at is we know how to work out the future value of an annuity. That was this formula. Uh, sorry, the future value of N investments of an amount of X can be calculated by taking, substituting into this formula. And just two things that's very important that we have to remember. I represent my interest rate per investment. Okay, so if my investment is monthly, I must take monthly investments. N does not retain, uh, represent the number of years I invest. No, no, it represents the number of investments that I am making, the number of investments that I am making. Okay, now that we have quickly looked at this again, let us go and see. What is the relationship between the future value and the present value? And I think it's best described by looking at uh, a loan. Imagine a loan. Okay, you take up a certain loan, and let's call that that loan. The value of that loan is PN. In other words, that's how much the the bank gives you right now. That's the present value of the money that we have in this whole system. Okay, so it's the present value of the loan. Now let's say you have to pay this back after n terms. In other words, let's say it's months, then you have to pay it back over 240 months. That's 20 years. Okay, so if I take this loan out now and I must pay back the full amount of this loan in 20 years' time. All at once, I'm not making recurring payments, I paid all at once. Then it means that this is a present value, that is the future value after 20 years, and how will I work it out? Well, I'll, I'll use my uh, this formula. If I'm earning compound interest, I'm not making recurring payments. So you get that? Get that in your head completely. Okay, so in other words, the future value of this loan that I must pay back, I'm going to call it FN now because um, I'm considering this future value, is my present value that's earned interest for N years. Oh, well, not N years, but depending on N terms. Let's rather say terms. Okay, so this is how much I must pay back. Now, why did I call it FN? Well, that's because instead of paying it back in 20 years' time, I'm going to start investing immediately so that in 20 years' time, I will have enough money to pay back. So though this is my future value of my loan, it's also going to be the money, the future value of a recurring investment. Because what I'm going to do to pay off this loan at the end is make monthly deposits into a, an account. Because otherwise, where am I going? Let's say I borrowed a million rand. At the end of 20 years, I must give back 7 million rand. Where am I going to get 7 million rand from if I don't start saving up immediately? In other words, what would be the future value that is in my bank account? Now, that future value must be equal to the future value that I owe on my loan. 
So let's see. How do I calculate that future value? Well, I know it is x 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i. And this must be equal to the present value of this loan that has earned interest for a number of years. And all I want to do is solve for Pn, and that will give me a formula for the present value of this annuity. Okay. So I divide both sides with this bracket. 1 plus i to the power n. 1 plus i to the power n. And this is what I get on this side. It cancels. So I get a formula of Pn is equal to, and on, and on the left hand side, all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this 1 plus i into that bracket. So I've got two factors in the denominator that is dividing the two factors in the numerator. I'm just going to divide the one factor so long. So in other words, I'm distributing this division factor to both of the terms inside there, okay? And you'll see what happens. So by dividing it into one of the factors of the numerator, I must divide each of the terms in that factor, which means uh, for the first term, for that those two terms, 1 plus i to the power of n divided by 1 plus i to the power of n gives me 1 minus 1 divided by, and I'm just writing it here, 1 divided by 1 plus i to the power of n can also be written as um, 1 times 1 plus i to the power of negative n. A negative exponent means divide the coefficient. And I don't need to write the 1. In other words, I'm just left with 1 plus i to the power of negative n. And in the denominator, I am left with my i. I didn't divide in that one as well. And look at that. There I've got a formula for my present value of an annuity. Now, okay, maybe the whole time you're like, what on earth is the present value? Sorry, I'm writing it wrong while I'm speaking. What on earth is the present value of an annuity? How can, how can a recurring payment have a value before I started paying? Well, there's two ways in which you can think about it that might make sense. One way is, if I promise to pay you, I make you a promise. And I tell you, you know what, we, we're good friends and you can trust me. I am going to pay you 100 Rand every month, starting in one month's time. In one month's time, I'm going to pay you 100 Rand every month for 12 months. Now, I don't think there's 12 lines there, but it doesn't matter. For 12 months, I'm going to pay you 100 Rand every month. How much will you be willing to give me right now for that promise? How much is that promise to you worth right now? Well, you might say, okay, it's worth 1,200 Rand. You're going to pay me 1,200 Rand over a year. And I would think, man, you are really a good friend. Because actually, actually, you aren't even charging me any interest on money that I'm actually borrowing from you. Because I'm actually borrowing 100 Rand from you and only paying it back in a month's time. And another hundred and paying it back in two months time. And another hundred and paying it back in three months time. So if it wasn't for interest, you would give me a thousand two hundred rand right now. Because you wouldn't charge me any interest. Okay? And if it wasn't for interest, then the present value of this would be equal to the future value of this. But in fact, there is interest. And most of the times, and I don't think any of you like me that much, that you, you'll pay me 1,200 Rand and I just need to give you back 100 Rand over 12 months. No, you might say, okay, I, I, I won't give you, I won't give you 1,200, uh, but I'll only give you 1,000 Rand back. And I'll say, okay, that sounds fair or that, that's a little bit too little. I expect you to give me more. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but 
This would mean that even though I pay a, pay you back a total of a thousand two hundred rand, the present value of that total is less because I'm paying you back a hundred rand in one month's time, but that hundred rand includes a little bit of interest, one month of interest. The next hundred rand includes two months of interest, and the next hundred includes three months of interest. Okay. And that is why this present value of a loan can almost be like cons considered how much is a promise of this recurring payment worth to you right now. And the way banks use this and the way it's mostly applied in reality is with uh, loans. With loans. You want to buy a house that is now worth a million rand. So you go to the bank and you say, listen bank, I want to buy a house of a million rand. How much must I promise to pay you every month for the next 20 years? In other words, how much must I pay every month for 20 years, all the way, 20 years is 240 months. How much must I pay monthly? And the banks will use this formula. They will say, okay, well, here's our formula for the present value. In other words, the present value is how much you want right now. And you want a million rand right now. And we want to work out how much must we pay in order that that, that promise of paying that for 240 months will be equal to and obviously you can see this is going to depend a hundred percent on just two things it depends on how many payments are you going to make and what is the interest going to be on each payment the interest rate going to be on each payment those two things are going to influence if n gets bigger it means you're going to make more payments which obviously means that you're going to pay less per month because you make more payments. If I only had to pay this in two payments, it's going to be roughly 500,000, a little bit more than 500,000 because of the interest. If interest increases, <coughs> then obviously it's also going to be more um, because the bank is charging me a higher interest. So interest can almost, almost be seen in this case as the risk they are taking. Because they are taking a risk because maybe you won't obey your promise. So interest is kind of the risk they are taking or the confidence that they put in that you will pay. So a lower interest means they put a higher confidence that you will pay. A higher interest means that they, they doubt whether you will really be able to pay and they want to make their money back as soon as possible. Cool. We are going to look in the next video at a few examples. Good luck.